In this video, we'll take a look at the Format Paragraphs dialog box. You will click in this first body text paragraph of the document so that whatever action I take will affect this paragraph and choose Format Paragraph. We're going to begin by looking at the Indents and Spacing tab of the Format Paragraphs dialog box. The indent is the spacing between the margins and the beginning of the text. This is a sort of preview box of how things are going to go. So if I say I want a point three five or a quarter inch indent here, that's not going to do it. And I want the first line indented half an inch or point Press OK, and we can see that we've moved in a quarter inch from the margin here and a half inch from the margin here. Paragraph dialog box, and we'll see the preview in a second. This will get automatic. The first line, the amount of the first line indent will be selected based on the font and size of the text of that paragraph. Spacing above and below the paragraph is the amount of white space above and below a paragraph. It's a better technique to use this than to press the enter key to create an entire line. The reason is because this is readily changeable. You don't have to ever go through a document um, deleting and inserting characters. So let's say that we don't want any space above this paragraph, but that we want a third of an inch. Point three below it. And again, I'm going to click OK. And we'll see now that we have this white space after the paragraph. But if I turn on the non printing key, only one entity is created, it's within the formatting of that paragraph. Format paragraph. And finally, on the indents and spacing, line spacing. Single, of course, is the kind of text we're not, it's sort of normal spacing. One and a half is quite popular, makes for a very readable document. Double is quite big, but it's wonderful for documents that need to be editing. Proportional, at least leading and thick, I'm not going to worry about right now. Those are more for word place, for page layout tasks, so we're really going to stick with single one and a half and double. For now, I'm going to choose one and a half. Before I click OK, I just want to explain this activate checkbox. This has to do with um, printing on both sides of the page when you want to make sure that the lines of text on both sides of the page line up vertically on the page so that you don't hold up a piece of paper and see the text on the other side through the white space. So again, not something we'll need to worry about so much in a second, the effect of one and a half line spacing. And you see that really is an attractive space, an attractive space. Going back to the format paragraph dialog box, let's look at the alignment tab. The alignment tab is pretty pretty ordinary, left, right, center, and justified. The difference being that we have some options on the justified option that we did not have on the format tab. So when you have justified text, you can choose to have the last line of the paragraph left aligned, centered, or justified. If you choose justified and check expand single word, then that last line will be will fill the page. So not a very good example in this paragraph, but it can lead to lead to some odd results. I would stay away from that and typically we're going to choose left aligned for the last line of the first paragraph. Again we're not going to worry about this text yet. Text flow, outline and numbering tabs we're going to be on a set at another time. Drop cap. A drop cap is that big initial display cap that 
you can, that you can use. You can choose whole word and then you'll get the entire first word. Or you can control the number of letters that you want to have. Just go to whole word and you'll never see the difference. And you can choose the size of it by saying I want it four lines deep, three lines deep. And you can control the amount of spacing between the end of the dot cap and the space. I just tend to leave it the way it is. Um, it just tells you what you've chosen. It's pretty apparent from the front. And this is styles, and they're not very useful. Um, if you had a particular character style that you had built, then you could use that, but for now we do it. And there we have the dot cap. More typically. We would be putting down here the numerical one letter. That's a more typical way that um, drop caps are done. Finally, we have borders. This is where you can put a box around your paragraph, and you can do quite a lot. You can use, you can choose the lines independently. Let's say this one. In red, and then on this side, we'll change it. We'll change this one, uh, this one in magenta, which is purple. And we'll put the same thing there, and then I won't put one there just to show you. So see, here we have the paragraph. We have the double line at the top in red, and the magenta is at the edge with a nothing on the top. If you want a new paragraph down here, inside the little bit that's in that little paragraph, new paragraph, more likely you're going to choose all four borders. Choose a fairly subtle, which you may very well end up with. So that highlights the entire paragraph. And back before that paragraph, the final tab Oh, the spacing for content is to be very standard. That's going to give you the right thing. Um, you can shadow it. That could be an effective formatting tool. And finally, on the background, we could put a nice pale green background behind the text for a nice colorful formatting. So that's the format paragraph dialog.